Hello everyone. This video is going to be about pagination, specifically with regards to DynamoDB. Uh, the format of this video is going to be such that first I talk to you about what pagination is as a concept, followed by how pagination works in the context of DynamoDB. And finally, I'm going to talk to you about some best practices and considerations you should have if you're using DynamoDB and pagination in your application. But before I get into that, I just briefly want to mention a neat tool I came across when working with DynamoDB, and the tool is called DynoBase. Uh, DynoBase is an application that's devoted to making your life easier when working with DynamoDB. Uh, it includes features that allow you to perform some normally tedious Dynamo tasks, as well as visualize your data in a pretty intuitive way. And DynoBase has a seven day free trial, so I recommend you try it out to see if it's right for you. You can find a link in the description section below. All right, so let's get right into it. So the first thing I wanna to talk to you about is what pagination is as a basic concept. So the classic definition of pagination is the act of retrieving data in fixed size blocks. And the analogy I like to use uh, when I'm talking about pagination is, imagine that you have a bucket and you're trying to move stones from one side of a river to another. Um, you only have a fixed size bucket. You can only fit so many stones inside of your bucket. So you need to make multiple trips because obviously you can't fill all of the stones in your bucket at once. You need to go back and forth, back and forth, pick them up and empty them on the other side multiple times in order to move all of those stones to the other side of the river. This in effect is what pagination is. You're basically retrieving data in chunked buckets. Um, and eventually after you call enough times, you're gonna get all your data back. Um, so in the context of DynamoDB, it allows you to retrieve large amounts of data in chunked API calls. So these are gonna be individual API calls where you specify how many records you want, and you're gonna get that many records back provided that they exist. And pagination isn't something that's special to DynamoDB. Uh, pagination is a specification that DynamoDB implements. So whether you're working with a traditional SQL database or a NoSQL database or any kind of data retrieval mechanism, pagination is always going to be a concern to you because you can't get all your data in one call. It's just not feasible from a querying perspective. Uh, so that's what pagination is as a concept. Now let's talk about how pagination works in the context of DynamoDB. And this is gonna be a pretty high level overview, not gonna get into the details of how DynamoDB implements it under the hood, but just enough detail to give you um, what you need to kind of go out and start working with pagination. Uh, so imagine for a second we have a transactions table. And in this transactions table, we have nine records, T1 through T9, and the key is is this field here, and obviously each of these may have a, a JSON or a couple columns uh, that is filled with data. Now there's three important things that are important when working with pagination, uh, specifically within DynamoDB, and they are exclusive start key, last evaluated key, and query page size. Uh, this probably all sounds like gibberish, but don't worry, by the end of this, you're gonna know exactly what these mean. Uh, I wanna talk about query page size and exactly what this means. Um, so by default, if you query DynamoDB and you don't use any pagination parameters, what DynamoDB will, will try to do is to query one megabyte worth of data. Uh, so let me get my trusty pen here. Okay, so there we go. So say for instance, assume for a second that T1 through T4, this is one megabyte worth of data, okay? And if you have a query on this table, you will only by default get one megabyte worth of data back from DynamoDB. So it'll give you T1 through T4. So this is default behavior if you're not using pagination. And a lot of people get stuck here because they think that, oh, I'm querying Dynamo, I'm passing in my parameters. Why isn't it giving me T5 through T9 in addition to T1 to T4? So why isn't it giving me everything? And the answer is because there's a, a limit on the amount of data DynamoDB will pull for you. And these are what's called pages. pages of one megabyte worth of data. Um, so this is the default behavior. So if you don't specify a query page size, Dynamo will try to get up to one megabyte of data. Uh, so this is a little bit unpredictable for many applications. Often you want to have a, some kind of SLA or contract from an API perspective to say, I will return you at most 500 records or 100 records or 10 records, whatever your contract is. So the way that you can get around this is that you can specify a query page size and say, instead of just defaulting and returning um, one megabyte worth of data, you can say, I want my query page size to be three. And using this approach, you'll only get three results when you make a query. And then you'll get a key back, and we're gonna talk about that next. And you'll make a subsequent query and get the next three, and then a subsequent query and get the next three. 
Um, the same kind of rules apply. So say for instance, let me just erase this. Say for instance, if these guys were one megabytes worth of data and you still had a three query page size, you would still only get back T1 and T2 because you're still hitting that one megabyte limit by just querying these two records. Uh, so this is especially important if your table is such that the uh, content of it is variable. So maybe some rows will have more data than others. Uh, this really can start to become a problem. Okay, so let's get into how querying actually works and what this exclusive star key and last evaluated key business means. Um, so when you initially make a query, there's a concept called exclusive start key. And typically, if you don't provide this, uh, the value is by default set to null. Uh, so this doesn't make sense right now, but let me explain it once we uh, get to the next steps here. So assume for a second you make a query with some kind of criteria. And by default, in the beginning, if you don't specify this, this is set to null. And let's also assume here we're setting a um, page size to 5. Okay, so our page size is 5. So at most, we're going to get T1 through T5. Uh, so what DynamoDB will do when you submit this query is that it'll try and retrieve those five records. So let me get my pen again. Uh, so it'll try to get the, the T1 through T5, provided that these records do not exceed one megabyte worth of data. Okay, so what it'll do is it'll return those records. So assume here that maybe this is less than one megabyte, maybe it's like 500 KB or something worth of data. In addition to returning that data, it'll also return something called the last evaluated key. And this is a key that basically tells Dynamo where it's leaving off. So it's telling the Dynamo engine that I left off right here at T5. So when the next query comes in and someone passes in this key, I wanna start here and start retrieving everything downward. So that's the basic concept here. The last evaluated key acts as a checkpoint that DynamoDB will give back to you. And how it essentially works is that the next time you make a call, you set your exclusive start key to be that same value, that last evaluated key that was returned in the previous uh, query. So these two things are equal. Uh, so when you make that call with the exclusive star key set to this value, now Dynamo is going to know that I left off at T5. So I'm going to go ahead and get T6 through T9 in the next API call. And that's exactly what it's going to do. Uh, actually, this has a T10 in it, assuming there wasn't a T10. Uh, but it's going to return everything back to you that's remaining. And if everything is retrieved, so there's no more data, as we can see in this example, the last evaluated key is going to be null. And this is kind of when you know that you're done querying. So if you're trying to retrieve all the data with respect to a particular query, you would keep on calling until the last evaluated key returned back to you is equal to null. So this in a nutshell is how DynamoDB pagination works. Uh, just to recap what we said. So initially you make a query and you set your exclusive star key to null. Um, the results that you'll get back will be either one megabyte worth of data or whatever your query page size is set. If there are, is more data that you need to retrieve, the last evaluated key will be non-null, so it will have a value. When you want to retrieve the next page, you pass in the exclusive start key with that value, and you'll get basically where you left off worth of data. Uh, and then provided the last evaluated key is null, that's your indicator that you are done querying and you have all the data with respect to this query. Uh, this is one of the rare conditions where a do while loop actually makes sense. Uh, I don't know about you, but I very rarely find a scenario where a do while loop is a suitable uh, structure to use. This is actually one of the very common use cases for me using do while loop is when I'm doing DynamoDB pagination. Uh, so that's how DynamoDB pagination works from kind of high level perspective. Uh, now let's quickly go over some considerations and best practices that you should have when you are using it or thinking about using pagination. Uh, so like we kind of alluded to before, one query will not necessarily return all the results. So unless you know how pagination works or you know to, to look at that last evaluated key, this may be a little bit confusing to you, um, but hopefully at this point is clear now. Secondly, you have a one megabyte limit regardless of page size. So like we were talking about before, um, if you specify a page size of 100 or 1000 or 10 million, whatever your page size is, I'm sure there's a limit on the page size for Dynamo, but it doesn't really matter if your data um, sums up to one megabyte worth of data, then you'll get that amount back regardless of your page size. Okay. 
And the third one is that it only works serially, uh, which means that you can't do a scatter gather. So what I mean by a scatter scatter gather is that um, say you, you have an application and you want to call your Dynamo table over here. A common pattern is that people spawn a bunch of threads and then each thread will kind of query a different page on this table. Uh, this doesn't work for pagination because you can only do it in sequence. So you make the first call, then you make the second, then you make the third, then you make the fourth. And the reason this is, is because of the last evaluated key concept that I explained previous. Uh, this is not true for scanning. So DynamoDB scans. You can actually do scatter gather with DynamoDB scans using a different concept, which I'll, I'll talk about in a different video. Uh, but when you're using default queries, you cannot do scatter gather. And finally, on the best practices side, uh, it's usually a good idea to incorporate pagination into your API contract or your API definition. Uh, it's usually not a good idea to retrieve all of your data within an API. Um, so what I mean by that is that if you have an API that says maybe get transactions, instead of d doing pagination within that API, so you know calling in a do while loop within that API, instead what you should do is return that last marker back to your caller and have a contract to say this API only returns 100 rows at most. Okay, and this will kind of give you some structure to your API and also give you a reasonable balance that you're not getting in a situation where your latency of your API does not get carried away, especially if you're doing this do while loop trying to retrieve hundreds, thousands, millions of records. Uh, so it's a good idea to incorporate pagination into the contract so that you don't get boxed into a corner making numerous API calls within your API itself. You should hand that responsibility off to the caller. So hopefully this video helped. I'm going to follow this video up with a more hands-on tutorial to show you exactly how to do it. And when that video is available, I'll put it in the description section. Also, please don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on next week's video. Thanks so much, folks, and I'll see you next time.